got me feeling like I'm academics. Can't ride no way. Oh boy. Oh boy. Chat, we we we, we have hit our um I hit I hit six hours today. I like that. I like that. Yo, did did y'all see this shit recently, bro? Nigga, I was watching no jumper. Um, whack one hunted Flacco. He rushed Flacco like he was about to beat that nigga up. Did y'all see this? Y'all think y'all slipped. Okay, so what? what? No. What happened? You, you both of y'all. I said that, girl. Oh God. God. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah, that's nah. some shit. Nah. <laughs> hey, yo. But you got to stop letting niggas use you. Now, see, I know you. Okay, so say here's the backstory. Basically, Wack 100 is telling Flacco that Flacco got a show on No Jumper. Flacco brought on some guys who are the ops for Wack. But then they come on Flacco's show. Wack obviously don't control No Jumper, but they, they're, they're on Flacco's show. And they're saying, like, that's the thing with the West Coast. They got, like, these little small terms that disrespects the other person's block. But you wouldn't know unless you're in that gang, I guess, Flacco, who's from Idaho or something like that. He didn't know what the fuck was going on, but them dudes was on the show disrespecting um, um, Wack 100's hood or his gang. And Wack 100 now is checking him like, yo, bro, you got to stop being used by these niggas because, yo, I'm getting phone calls because you're letting people on your show disrespect my gang. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you let niggas come on. I ain't going to lie to you. Yo, I think, no jump, uh, I think Adam going to sign the whole No Jumper platform up to Zeus in the next year. So I'm going to tell you why. Bro, you got to think about it, bro. This is like the, this is like gangland reality show. Like, I'm telling you, nigga, I don't even know nothing about gangs. Nigga, I come here and figure it out. This guy, is, his name is, in, his gang is insane. He's Pacoima. Nigga, like, this is where I get all my gang information from. They got to put this shit on Zeus. This shouldn't even be on YouTube for free. I'm on your thing. Yeah. And for one, you did some weird shit. That Re react to who? That's your thing. But you let them niggas diss my hood, bro. And Wait, I, can't, my I, can't, show? I can't control them niggas. My pro listen, let me yeah. tell you the difference okay. between you South Central shit she just got and Pacoima. Uh -huh. My projects yeah. are four miles that way. That's a fact. No, true. You're, you're in the valley. Yeah. So you got niggas doing shit because you trying to show love and they mm. want to play with me. But that's bigger than play playing with me. Like, if you diss insane, that ain't just them. Yeah. It's all kind of niggas that don't do social media and shit that don't do that. But you didn't took it upon yourself. Left some shit in the building. Right? Okay. And now yeah. they should at least have enough respect to say... Well, we know Wack don't fuck with us. I ain't trying to block nothing. I'll let you do your shit. I ain't yeah, of course. It, it's but up. don't have them. They on your platform dissing. That shit gonna lead to some shit. Well, it's not like my show, though. Like, yeah, it's your show. Look, I got niggas from yeah. prison sending me the shit. Because they think I'm here every day. No, I true, though. But it's not my show, right? It's your show. No. The title you, got is... up, you got them up there. Yes, right? Yeah, so either... Mm -hmm. All right, no, let, me skip to gonna... the, let me skip to the lip part. So basically, he's trying to explain to Flacco. Flacco say, nah, it ain't my fault, blah, blah. Right, and then getting out of individual. Mm -hmm. it, let me ask you something. If a nigga sitting in front of me, keep it real. Talk mm -hmm. to me. In front of me in that role, yeah. and a nigga just outright just insane. Right in front of me on my show. What, what I'm gonna do, that? You you gotta correct them niggas, or I'm gonna feel some type of way about that. You. There you go. Man, you gonna yeah. have to holler. That's right, a what's problem. Up with you, okay, I don't know who this is, but he's insane too. He's that, that's a problem. And this is why I keep telling you, yeah. bro, stay flacco. They yeah. the, the nigga from North Dakota. You letting these niggas drag you, the wrong niggas drag you in the shit. Mm -hmm. And while you showing love, they yeah. using you. They, they, they know that when my homie see that, they gonna call me and then it's a conversation with you. For what? When you showing them niggas love. Mm -hmm. Right? I could have called you, what you doing, nigga? I don't, I don't trip, do your shit. I don't give a fuck. Y'all yeah. do y'all thing. But nigga, at some point, if you think that your platform is gonna be a platform they got to come diss my neighborhood, then you gonna find out what it is. Wait, but like, hey, but like, no jumper, it's not my platform, it's Adam's platform, right? And the yeah. show itself. Hey, on pop. hey listen, hold on, 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 hold on pie, 3.14, like, like he, he ain't even finished saying rule. Hey, listen, hold on, don't fuck with up. Oh, shit. Hey, listen, hold on, don't fuck with up. Hey, listen, hold on, don't fuck with up. Oh, yo, stop playing with whack. I don't know if y'all see. That blickster, always on the hip. Oh,
Hey, covering it up. I see my boy. Okay, 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 okay. Somebody said no jumper canceled the news. What happened now? Uh, I'll get to the no jumper Reddit. Okay, so I have a pretty huge announcement and I'm doing it on Snapchat. Uh, so anybody who's thinking about ripping this and putting it on any other platform, don't even think about it. Anyway, Snapchat exclusive. Uh, and Big Act exclusive. I'm making some very big changes in terms of no jumper. As of today, or as of- Wait, wait, is, is this like trolling? Is he trolling or is this like April Fool's? What day is today? Today's the 21st. Tomorrow, the news, no jumper news. It's over. The Monday show, the Wednesday show, and the Thursday show also are over. I've decided that I really want to focus No Jumper. So I will be continuing to do the Tuesday show with Lush and Brick Baby. I will continue to do as many interviews as possible. I'm going to have other people on the platform. Continue Wait, did he fire everybody? Continuing to do interviews, everybody from you know Almighty, Sharp, Break. I just talked to all these guys. Flacco. Um, we're still going to work together on doing interviews and you know doing like repeat guest type interviews where I you know have people on uh, multiple times to talk about different things that are going on in the news, everything like that. But this decision has really been brought on primarily, I guess, as a business decision, and I, I say that to say. I've been talking to my business manager a lot over the course of the past few weeks, taking a real deep dive into how the channel is doing, how much content we're creating and taking a look at like what the true cost of creating stuff like the news is and have basically just come to the conclusion that it makes more sense for No Jumper to produce less content and be a little bit more focused with a smaller team. Adam's a little evil genius. He's setting it up again that all these niggas going to make their own shows again. Then he's going to get mad again. And then we're going to get the second reiteration of, what's it called? Um, community. And back on fig. <laughs> Adam, you do know all the niggas you've given a start is now going to just step out, right? Like, <laughs> And now, and also with you cutting their effort, they're going to see where your ship is going. They're going to now have to realize the only fool still, well, not let me not say still there. The only fool there that you realize have zero other place to go is like Sharp. Because like, I think the Sharp tank as a show, at least at first, could have been something that could have lived anywhere. And then he just turned into the same thing he claimed I owed him money for, a no jumper employee. Um, yeah, if I'm these guys, I got to go start building my own shit now. I'm going to be honest. A smaller number of employees, etc., and to just, you know, be a little bit more focused. You know, I look at a lot of my peers. I look at Vlad. Obviously, Vlad has kind of always been like the OG as far as I'm concerned in terms of uh, this whole YouTube content space. And when I look at Vlad, I think that he kind of does it the smartest way possible, which is like if he wants to have a conversation with somebody, he just calls them in, pays them their rate, and then they do the conversation. He doesn't really have like consistent co-hosts. Obviously, I'm still... Okay. And I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up the like our. I don't think really our industry should because I don't really pay people. To be fair, Vlad is paying certain of the, some of these guys exorbitant fees because these guys are like really lucrative. Now I don't know what Adam has looked at on his back end, brother. You have a bunch of gang niggas up there who are damn near about to die and kill each other every day for something going viral. And it is giving you views. I'm going to just throw out random numbers because I don't want to give out Vlad business either. Or did Vlad tell you how much he pays Boosie? I, I won't say the number, but he pays the nigga really well. What Vlad pays Boosie for one interview, and, and obviously it's Boosie, so Boosie gets numbers on everything. And yes, he's going to milk that content for a while. That is enough that let me think about all these shows that what Vlad pays for that one interview, I don't think is even more than what Adam would be paying all these guys together. 
Like, I don't think he's paying them that much, right? You know what I mean? Like, I thought there was a time that Flacco was getting, like, mad bread. Like, Flacco told me the truth. He was like, nah, nigga. So what I'm saying is that, I, you know, without, without, because I'm not trying to put people's business all the way on blast, I'm wondering why Adam is saying this, knowing Vlad is paying a pretty penny to the right people. Like, Vlad ain't paying, like, 300 bucks. Vlad is giving niggas, some niggas, tens of thousands of dollars. And, again, Vlad needs those recurring people, and he'll always have to pay that, right? With Boosie's, Boosie's not doing the free shit. Not with Vlad. They have a contract. Well, if you have these homegrown talent... And, and, and I don't know if, if Adam is making the same mistake he, he made before because I thought this was his time to do it right. Bro, just sign these niggas to longer, like, to a 360 situation. My bad. Like, kind of somewhere where, when I mean 360 situation, they all are doing the live stream thing probably outside of No Jumper, have other shit going on. Have it all come up within the uh, No Jumper umbrella and stop thinking that it only has to be on a No Jumper. Have them have their own channels. And kind of do what an MCN does. That's what I'm thinking. By the way, I'm, I'm not saying it like I, I know how to do this. I actually look at Adam in the space of trying to hire a shit ton of people. I, I think he knows the best because he's tried it the best, which means he's either gained the most or lost the most, right? But I'm, I'm wondering if, like, why, why, don't, why not look at it like that? Because, you know, if, if, if you had looked at No Jumper like an MCN, and it, it was kind of like, I'll give you an example. Full send. Salute to Full Send. Salute to Nelk. Under Nelk, they have the Full Send podcast. They have Yachty's podcast. Actually, there was even talks they wanted me to do a podcast. You get what I'm saying? Like, they have other podcasts. So, like, they're having a podcast network, but not everything has to be under the Full Cell brand. Or they have Steiny having a podcast, too. You get what I'm saying? So, it's like, maybe they could look at um, no, no Jumper like that. Anyway, let me just keep listening to what he says. Still going to have consistent co-hosts. I'm still going to do the Tuesday show with Brick and Lush because I still enjoy, you know, building that camaraderie. Lush is back there. I thought Lush got fired and everything like that but as far as like just trying to pump out so much content and doing two hours of the news every day and two hours every night you know I, I, even like someone like brick i just had the conversation with brick about the no statement show on wednesday and like he totally gets it and if anything he was kind of like bro i didn't really feel like i was ready to do my own podcast in the first place i just took it on because you suggested it you believed in me and you know like honestly all these guys from Almighty to Flacco to Sharp to Brick, I've seen all these guys grow a shitload as the years have gone by doing content on the channel. And, like, you know, somebody like Almighty, I was just gassing him up. I'll say it here, too, because I believe it was just that I've seen him grow a lot as an interviewer. Okay, I got cut off there. Anyway, I was just saying all about Almighty is that, you know, he's somebody who I've seen grow a shitload as a interviewer and content creator. And he has, like, an amazing ear slash just like... Hmm. Oh, you know, okay, maybe that's what, I don't know. So I was, I just checked the numbers of like No Jumper. I, I, I bro, they put out so much content and I've always seen like things go kind of, not really viral, but like it's making waves in the No Jumper verse a little bit. I, I thought they were doing like fucking amazing, right? But but I could imagine, yeah, like the, the numbers and how many people does does Adam hire? Like he probably got too many people on, on camera. You know what I think this is? Adam probably, yo, I, I don't know what type of hiring practice they have. I think it's kind of like you could just walk on, like you could just be at Adam's warehouse and walk on camera. And if the people like you a little bit, you just stay on camera. Because <laughs> like random niggas, yo, I'll see like a random nigga just like accidentally walk in frame and then he never leaves. I'm like, wait, who is this nigga? <laughs> I think he's just got to narrow it down, bro. Just narrow it down. Tell some of these niggas to leave. Yo, Adam, do I got to tell these? Nah, I ain't going to tell these gang members none of you, bro like a and r mindset for new talent you know he's paying attention on a level that i really look up to and i need people around me like him and remo etc to like really help keep me tapped in with exactly also adam this ain't fair in the last couple weeks if, if y'all were saying y'all were looking at numbers this and third this ain't y'all time right now hip-hop conversations y'all numbers gonna go down they only come to me and joe button i'm sorry like we took all the views i'm sorry all right they're, we're done with that. We're back on Diddy, and we're back to fuckery time. This is time, usually summertime, niggas start getting shot, 
beefs are happening, gang banging is going to be at an all-time high. This is where your number is going to go up. You can't fire them before gang banging season. No, hell no. Uh-uh. Adam, the only reason why, like, your numbers probably was a little bit tame and not say, because, you know, it's still no jumper, is because it's hip-hop shit, man. Like, nigga, yo, I looked on my, I looked on my fucking YouTube thing. Nigga, at one point it said we did 6 million views in, in, in 48 hours. You don't see them on Social Blade because we private all our videos. I was like, fuck, I'm getting all the views. <laughs> Thank you. But that was during Drake and Kendrick. We care about rapidly rap. That time is over, bro. You feel me? Now it's time for what up, cuh? On six. So that's the time right now, bro. Like, you got to let these niggas live. A good squabble will get the numbers right back up what's going on in the culture and everything like that so this has nothing to do with me being you know against any of the hosts on the channel if anything i just had the conversation with all of them and they all took it in stride and and understood where i was coming from and realized that you know it's just a straight business decision so this is a big development you know i look at like a lot of people my peers in the space and i, I look at myself and i'm like damn i spent the last however many years trying to really build you know, somebody said getting fired before gang season really hit his peak is crazy yeah no jumper up as like a network where we could be producing a huge amount of content and there's over the last couple of weeks from just having these conversations i just realized this isn't really what i want to spend the next 10 years of my life doing in terms of trying to create I've heard Adam say this five times, bro. I don't, yo, I feel like Adam eventually going to tell, yo, I want to spend the next 10 years of my life fucking bitches, man, like porn. Because he did say this before, and he kind of angled to, like, the more of these conversations about social issues. More of, like, you know, have people like Destiny and, you know, obviously people didn't like the direction when he was, like, talking to, like, some Richard Spencer and shit like that. But it looked like he was saying he was having more riveting conversation there. And then he didn't go there. Then he hired a bunch of gangbangers. You know what I mean? And, and nothing wrong with them because I, I think that the DW dude is great. Obviously, Wack 100 is a fucking star. Um, who else? Who else? Uh, Brick, Brick Baby, even though I just want that nigga to clear his nostrils one time. Like, to stop acting like he's keeping in smoke. He's not bad either. Like, he, he's gotten better. Let me just say that. He's gotten better. Uh, uh, Sharp, I've always liked Sharp. No, not Sharp. Not Sharp. My bad. I'm, I'm saying the wrong thing. Um, I've always liked Almighty. I think Almighty's mad underrated, which, by the way, I never commented on. But Almighty and and and, and Adam in that hip hop conversation, I had Almighty back the whole time. Like Almighty made sense, but Adam, I think Adam was. It's crazy that what at Adam's point, which he had a va very valid point too, is the same point that Vlad made when Vlad reported Shorty for saying he can't comment on hip hop. Right, like. You know, Vlad is probably thinking, nigga, I'm like the go to this hip hop media shit. I can't comment on hip hop. That wasn't necessarily the conversation that should have been had. And of course, Vlad and Adam could comment on hip hop. Um, but in the terms of uh, um, Almighty and 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 um and and Adam, yeah, the nigga was explaining that when you are when you grew up in a place of hip hop, you have a different cultural perspective that is sometimes more valuable than even someone who has interviewed a million people who are hip-hop artists. Yeah, and, and that's actually true. You know, you know what I mean? Like, again, even though I, I, I find myself as one of the people who absolutely love hip-hop, who's a fucking fanatic and whatever, whatever, somebody who fucking, you know, I came, at the end of the day, I came here like 10 years old. If, you know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't witness... Like, yeah, I was born before the Jay-Z and Nas thing, but, and even, like, um, Biggie and Pac, but I wasn't here for that. That wasn't even the culture that I was in at the time. And I think that's what uh, Almighty was trying to tell him. He was like, bro, you, you were kind of in a different culture at that point, so I do have a perspective, but I think Adam felt like he was, anyway, I'm talking about some shit I probably don't even know about. Anyway. Another at the end of the day, or another disconnected, if that counts, or whatever. You know, it's like, all that shit is dope, and it definitely has helped, you know, get us more views slash like you know make the fans interested but the truth is is that the the soap opera that comes with um uh, doing no jumper news and all that kind of stuff it doesn't benefit us that much it certainly is like something to talk about for a lot of people 
But, like, getting a bunch of clips up in the Reddit and shit doesn't really, like, do that much for us as a business. And really, when I look at my life as a 40-year-old man, it's like, I want to... Pri- that is true, too. Hey, by the way, Flaco Cita. <laughs> hey, I hope you're listening to this message. This is the message from Adam saying, it's cute that you go home and go do the videos about what happened at work that's drama-filled. But his... That's I keep telling Adam, just sign these niggas, man. Because Adam wouldn't give a fuck if everybody was eating off the drama there as long as his pocket was getting 30%, 40%, 50-50. Yo, if you talk about anything that happened to No Jumper, nigga, I get half, nigga. Primarily be putting my time into things that are going to, uh, you know, be more productive. Even like this right here, talking on Snapchat. Like, I, I hate to break it to you, but sometimes when I look at how much I made on Snapchat for the day, I'm like, why is YouTube my focal point? Why am I... Uh, looking at my YouTube analytics multiple times a day when I got this Snapchat shit going absolutely fucking crazy. I don't know. There's a lot of things I want to do in my life. And it's like, if I am just putting out a handful of podcasts per week and then doing the November show once per week, having some of these other guys do interviews on my behalf, like that's good enough for me. I don't need to be producing five hours of content per week in order to view no jumper as a success. So, I mean, I know a lot of people are going to probably try to frame this as me, uh, giving up or me being, you know, totally fed up with some of the hoes or some bullshit like that. That's not really the case. It's just a case of me wanting to sort of reprioritize and, and take a step back from producing like a huge amount of content. I'll give credit to Adam, you know, um, he does, you know, but I feel like it's because he liked it. Because I remember he was talking about, he said he liked interviewing niggas who nobody gave a fuck about but him. And I was just like, Nigga, are you serious? <laughs> like, like he was just saying, yeah, I don't mind if some shit got that, that I that I did a three hour interview got like ten thousand views, and I'm like, because he's like, oh, I had a good good time doing the conversation. I'm like, okay, no, that, that's a little bit different. So, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, get it. Hopefully people won't go too crazy with spinning like weird narratives and implying that I said things in the. Okay keep getting cut off there's like no way in snapchat to tell when you're gonna get cut off unless you want to like have a to my own peace of mind as well as my own uh you know ideas of what i want to be doing with the rest of my life and and you know i look at somebody who's my peer like a sean cotton we don't need to make it about vlad every time but i look at sean cotton and say cheese say cheese very popular channel popular business if you ask anybody who knows about what's going on in rap they'll tell you like say cheese is up there near the top of the pile in terms of just creating content that shifts the culture and everything. But, you know, I look at his channel and I'm like, this motherfucker Sean putting out like one podcast a week, maybe two. Like sometimes they'll put out podcasts like every two weeks, whatever, which is, you know, that's dope. Like you don't need to put out like a gigantic amount. of. No, no, I agree. And this is the thing I've, I've realized, but you know, I, me and Adam, I guess whenever we do a pod, we'll talk about it. It, this kind of goes counter to where what he kind of built the culture of No Jumper to be, which is kind of like, yo, I'm going to drop 20 videos a day, right? Like, that's kind of been the thing. Like, everybody knows on a YouTube algorithm perspective, when you start spamming videos, like, YouTube realizes this one channel gives us 20 videos a day. We're not even going to put 80% of them in the algorithm. Let's just put the... The, the 20% up that actually does something, which almost like defeats the purpose. Look at like the Abba and Preaches, anybody else, bro, they put out one or two videos a day. Dropping 20 videos a day, maybe it's good for a clips channel where like people know the intended purpose of that channel is to just farm as much clips as possible. But when you have your network just like flooding people, one, two, three, four, it's like, yo, what the fuck? You get what I'm saying? Maybe that was my content in order to be successful. Right. So I think for me, from a business perspective, it just makes sense to make a little bit less content and focus on other areas of the business that are a little bit more profitable that might have uh, longer legs and everything like that. This is also one thing I'm confused about by no jumpers, like profit margins is like, the reason why these moves always confuse me is that number one, if I'm Adam, I'm a white man in hip hop. 
I'm someone who has a platform that is rooted in hip hop or hip hop adjacent or whatever. Um, but it's definitely, you know, it affects culture. I don't think every, like, not everything I've ever done is straight profit loss. Like, okay, how much am I profiting from it? Like, like even with, you know, and obviously, well, Troy, I went to jail. We're about to try to, like, start up, maybe do two, three shows again. But, like, for me, I'm looking at it like I have to lose, I'm probably going to lose money in probably the hopes of building the brand to make money later on. You know what I mean? It's almost like you got to, you can't even do some of these things unless you got like a two, three year plan where you're going to be committed all the way. You can't be like, yo, all right, I'm going to put some money into it for like three months. And if it doesn't make money, right, like I'm just done. So, and I would think Adam like would also appreciate like having other, especially black personalities, especially ones that are strong. That's why I thought t Rell and, and, and um, AD were good that are, are good almost like either A mics or B mics on the platform gives more credibility to No Jumper as a platform in terms of black culture. Because no matter what, the, the thing they always throw Vlad under the bus for is like, yo, it's a white, like they hate, like the culture hates when they have to then listen to the person who has, who has the white face representing the brand. And if I'm Adam, I would be like, I would probably almost, yeah, I own this shit, but I almost try to prop up one of my people to make it seem like, yo, this is, yo, okay, look how TMZ does it. It ain't by design that TMZ always have, it was Harvey Levin, then he said, let bring the black guy over here. And they're both kind of like the face. Who really owns it or the CEO or whatever? It's Harvey, nigga. But he's made the black guy like a pretty prominent face that when it comes to certain cultural things, it doesn't seem like, oh, this is the white platforms. It, it, you know? Anyway, I don't know if that made sense. To so, me, the so, so I was saying that in terms of, yes, yeah, some of these guys you're hiring, I'm not saying, because I think No Jumper got to the point where any nigga who could like throw some shit up on his hand could get on camera, which is crazy. But you do got to invest in these guys who you have on on screen with you and even if it takes a a loss, I think your business model overall, you're 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 up. Like, you're definitely. I'm sorry, you got to take some of your porn money and invest. You're probably up. No, not probably. You're definitely up. No jumper wise across the board. You can't just look look at the YouTube analytics as look at this show. Look what they made. Look what it takes to produce it. I think you almost got to look at it as an investment for the future. That's what I always thought. No, I could be wrong. The the business model of just taking a bunch of homies and putting them on camera together and just assuming that the fans are going to want to watch. I don't know. It, it might have made a little bit more sense like mid pandemic. It might have made a little bit more sense five years ago, but it doesn't make that much sense now. And I think you see that with all sides of the media landscape where like, you know, Complex did everyday struggle didn't really work out in the long run. They ran into a whole bunch of problems that we don't need to get into, but the hosts asking for more money, the advertisers are hard to get, et cetera, et cetera. You know, they switched from Joe Budden to a different co-host, didn't really work out the same way. These are all problems that I basically have dealt with too, where it's just, it's a hard business to run. And even if, even if it was really cracking, it still would not be that profitable. It still would be a little bit tough to justify, even though obviously like at a certain level, it's good for the overall. Um, like if we speak about complex, I, I think a hip hop show was just tough, but also I don't think they really ever believed in what the hip hop show could have become. Now, complex is a weird, weird thing to compare any hip hop media um, network or channel to because primarily the most money they make comes from a food show, hot ones, hot ones and sneaker shopping are the, the flagship shows there and everything else is just to make moment, make money for the season. So, they're making money from two things that ain't cultural. Like, no disrespect to my man Sean Evans and even my, my man JLP, but it's just like, those things are, like, if, if you look at Hot Ones views, they'll have like 10 million views, but it's like people watching Lana Del Rey just eat fucking hot weight. Like, that's not even, you know? So again, their main business has never been for that. And, and and again, I, I think a lot of times when you're building out shows, you're just looking for two that that, that kind of could transcend the network, which obviously Hot Ones and, and Sneaker Shopping was, clearly. 
brand. But to get hip hop centric shows to do it, nah. Like you know what I mean? I think No Jumper would have to put out like I don't know, a food show or some shit like that. But like honestly, if they did like a food show on some like Keith Lee shit around LA, I could see that getting bigger than even No Jumper is because you know I've always I, I told Adam during our last interview, bro. There's a motherfucking ceiling when it comes to hip hop conversations. And these days there's so many people having it that if you don't have a name, you haven't put in the work, you haven't earned the trust the the you know what I mean like some of y'all been watching me for 10 years. You keep watching me off force of habit, off of yo this start nigga like, yo, we have shared jokes, we're almost like family. But like if you're a new guy doing hip hop um conversations, of course you get a a, a, a platform and a whatever, but it's like you're not going to be Joe Rogan, my nigga. And, like, even, you know, they'll be like, Ack, you're, you're so popular now. But it's like, yeah, we have, let me see how many people we have watching us right now. I don't know, probably about, like, 22,000 or whatever the case is um, across all platforms right now. Bro, that doesn't even, like, hit the, the tip of the iceberg compared to a, well, a Joe Rogan or some of these other comedy podcasts get. So there's a ceiling on hip-hop conversations. That's why, like, even with the Academy, not to, like, kind of front my move, like, it ain't going to be just hip-hop. It ain't going to be just hip-hop shows. You get what I mean? Like, of course, we want hip-hop conversation. But shit, man, we might have to, you know what I mean? Make some shit shake. And, but, yeah, you know, I, I know some people will have a hard time comprehending what I'm talking about and everything. It'll definitely be a letdown for some of the people who really thrive on documenting the uh, messiness on the No Jumper platform. But I think overall, this is just, this makes sense for me as a businessman and uh, I feel kind of light and free as a result of making this decision. So you're still going to see me having relationships with all the different hosts on camera to one level or another, but definitely some, some big changes coming down. No more, no jumper news. If you somehow miss. Well, and again, I don't think this is, you know, he's making a primarily a business decision. I think he's trying to take it a little bit differently than that he did last time, but here's what inevitably happens. If you were paying a nigga a rate to do a show and you cancel the show, it's like if, if you always work the Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday shift, and then I cancel two of your shifts, and yeah, you still work for me, but yeah, you come in every two weeks, nigga, you're going to start getting a little bit tight, and then you're going to start doing things that's going to be indicative of you saying, fuck my job. So, you know, again, yeah, he's making a business decision, but, you know, he has to acknowledge the ramifications of you cutting people's paychecks. Like... Some of these niggas rely on that paycheck you're giving them. And now if they can't get it, they're going to either have to exploit the brand in maybe ways you don't like, or they're going to have to do other things, which, you know, a lot of times is not going to be incongruent with what, what you want to see the brand do. It's that Monday show, Wednesday show, Thursday show, all moved or all uh, shut down. Tuesday show. Anyway, I keep getting cut off, but you guys get the idea. Okay. Uh... Yeah. No Jumper News over. No Jumper has a channel still going strong. You will certainly notice probably like a decrease in overall views because that's another part of it is that I've just kind of decided that I don't want to, I don't want to like spend my whole fucking life chasing after views. You know, it's like I'm doing well for myself. I got a nice life for myself. I'm proud of the content that I've been creating and that other people have been creating on my channel. But as far as just like always trying to, recapture the view counts that we were getting i'm wondering if he if he's trying to like almost pivot to which there was a small moment in time but, but i think his heart just wasn't in it you know the the whole way you know, he has one of juice world's first interviews xxx tentacion i believe little pump like there was a whole underground crowd of like really these boutique premiere interviews that he first did and adam is always a legend for that right and I think what happened, he had a nigga who was on there. Uh, I think Hakeem, th that dude kind of went on to do the same thing at like our generation or some shit like that. And I think, he, I think you know, he fell back along the lines of doing that. He's like started getting into the gangbanging shit. Um, and I was always wondering, I'm like, shit, I know me particularly, even, you know, I was telling people, people always be like, yo, I came from the War Chirac. False. Did I do the Warren Shirek? Yes. But you know the Warren Shirek is a demonetized channel. Like, YouTube YouTube sent me the notice. Hey, that channel, you could keep it. But 
it was only making like 70 bucks a month. And it, I stopped doing it for, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like about like eight years or something. But yeah, they demonetized it. Like, bro, YouTube don't want to, want to, monetize a bunch of gang content my nigga like like that's what one of the things i've been watching with like the whole no jumper thing i'm like maybe it's a white thing no no i'm playing i'm like could adam really monetize gangsta lifestyle like i'm gonna be honest with you whether youtube tells you or not algorithms is gonna flag it and say we don't want to put ads on this facts blur this out uh, um beat this out um um drill yeah Take this part out, okay? Yeah, like, yeah, they don't like gang conversations. I Anytime I used to do, do like, YouTube videos and I even put, like, a gang type of shit in the, in, in the, in the title, it would always get, like, yellow thingy. Bro, they don't want to hear about gangs, not YouTube. So I always wonder how, mon uh, how do you monetize that on a level where you have a gang reality show? I think Adam should take the fuckery to Zeus. Cause Zeus got people paying four ninety nine through the ass. You could get the same fucker going on there, and niggas could pay for the fades. That's my opinion. Anyway, I think he's done. And during the pandemic and shit, it's just that's not really what I need to be doing with my life. I got a couple of dope businesses. I got a lot of good stuff. There's other things I want to put time into. If for me, a, a great week on No Jumper is like we do the Tuesday show. I drop maybe like five, six interviews that I've done. Drop probably like a handful of interviews that uh, the other hosts have done. And we're good. I think that makes sense for me at this point in my life. So uh, appreciate everybody who watched this. Appreciate all the No Jumper fans. Rogue Game Forever. I love you guys. Uh, content will be getting a little bit more focused. That's actually good. Yo, yo, yo fans are so like used to content spam and they're like oh my god no it's the end no he's basically saying content's gonna get better for y'all anyway all right good shit good shit good shit all right a anything else chat we, we approaching seven hours man should i want us to spend the block on diddy again i, I think we pretty much got everything